morning to everybody and good morning to uh, those who uh, uh, following all for Jesus Church Amen. worldwide, especially in the Philippines. Amen. And I would like to greet my brother in Angolo Rizal. Amen. Uh, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. At, uh, and uh, I forgot to uh, to mention to you that that was your birthday last uh, April, uh, September 11. Amen. Because of so many uh, work that I have uh, have to do. Amen. Today it's also the birthday of our beloved pastor. Pastor Prince of Dallas. He's already he's already 17 years old. <laughs> <laughs> like me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the good praise God. Thank God. Because he gives us long and satisfying life. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let's open our Bible in Job chapter 1, verses 6 to 12. But first, I would like to emphasize to you, brothers and sisters, the works of Satan. Amen? Mm -hmm. In John 10.10, 10, I'm reading the King, King James Version, The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. This is speak of Satan and his emissaries. Who are those emissaries of Satan? These are the agents of Satan who peddle a false way of salvation. Examples of emissaries of Satan, they are serial killers. The cults, leader of weird religious belief, <coughs> liars, fornicators, adulterers, destroyers, etc., etc. But Jesus said, I am, I am come that they might have life and that they might, they might have it more abundantly. Yeah. The source of this life is no other than Jesus. Yeah. All true believers have these blessings exceedingly abundant. Above all, we ask more than enough we ask for. Amen. Amen. Or think what in this present physical life and the spiritual life and to give us more about that life and hope for the future. We have always hope as we go along with our lives. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bible in uh, Job chapter 1 verse 6 to 12. You see, uh, brothers and sisters, this is the first encounter between God and Satan. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read it now. <clears throat> In verse 6, one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you came from? Satan answered to the Lord, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no other, there is no one on earth like him. He is blameless, upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. In verse 9, does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand, so that his flocks and herd are spread throughout the land. In verse 11, but he stretch out your hand and strike everything he has. And he will surely curse you to your face. Amen. In verse 12, the Lord said to Satan, very well. Very well then. Everything he has is, your, is in your hands. But on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of, of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray, Father in heaven, Amen. in the name of Jesus. We come, we come to you today, Lord. This is the day that you have made, Lord. 
We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you have given to us Amen. for the whole week. Amen. In every day in our lives, every minute in our lives. Amen. Thank you for your protection and guidance towards us. And Lord, we uh, bless this uh, message that I'm going to give it to, the, uh, to your listeners, Lord. Amen. And let your name be magnified in this place. Yes, let your presence be filled in this place and all over the world who listens to your words. We thank you, the Father, and bless each and every one of us Amen. who listens to your words. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In verse 6, in chapter 1, verse 6 of Job, this is the first encounter between God and Satan. This meeting took place in heaven at the throne of God. Amen. They came as some members of heavenly council, the angels, in the presence of God. In verse 7, the Lord said to Satan, Where have you came from? <laughs> the Lord said to Satan, Where have you been? It seems to me that he's late. He's late at the meeting. He is the black sheep among the angels of the Lord. Amen. 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 Satan answered to the Lord. He said there, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Amen. Satan addressed the Lord from roaming through the earth and going and forth in it. Going back and forth in it. Meaning, this guy is making rounds. <laughs> Amen. He's making rounds, always on patrol, searches the whole earth, amen, searches the whole earth, roaming around continually, non-stop, never posing, never resting, seeking and looking whom he may devour, First Peter 5.8. Job's story begins with a challenge to Satan's argument that no one will obey God unless his selfish motives are being satisfied. Amen. So the Lord said to Satan in verse 8, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. So the Lord said to Satan in verse 8 that we have read, Job is closer to God than anyone else. Mm -hmm. He's closer to God than any, anyone else on earth. As, as this was described here on this verse. Job was the ideal person Amen. for God to use to disapprove Satan's assertion Amen. or insisted that human beings can be motivated only by satisfying their selfish, greedy desires. Amen. And that's about it. That's what Satan think about it. In Job 1.1, 1, 1, introduces to us that the man Job and his character, he was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. If suffering is intended as a punishment for evil, Job is not likely candidate. Job is not likely candidate. His reverence for God governs all he needs, all he does. In verse 2 and 3, the same, uh, the same chapter, let's read verse 2 and 3. It says here, he has seven sons, Job, and three daughters, and he owns 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people in the East. In verse 2 and 3, describe the way God has Bless Job. Amen? Amen. Describe the way God blessed Job. He blessed him in his righteousness. He had seven sons. 
That's a lot. Seven sons. And five daughters. And he owned a great number of cattle. Ships. A great number of donkeys. Camels and servants. He's, he had servants. Every corner in his property. Amen. Every corner in his property. He had a servant there. Even inside the house. He has a lot of servants. As well as outside of their, of their house. You could just imagine. How wealthy Job was. You could see in verse 3. He was the greatest man among the people of the East. In verse 4 and 5, his son used to take turns holding fists in their homes. And they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Amen. <coughs> and in verse 5, when a period of fasting has had run its course, Job will send and have have, and have them purified. Amen. In verse 4 and 5, this, this was a period of feasting or party. There's a lot of party going on Amen. in the house of God because it was held by, their, by, by his son and daughters. One after the other. After the other one have finished, the other again. The other one again. Mm -hmm. He has to hold or he has to hold party. Most probably for a week. Mm -hmm. it's, not only one, it's not only one day, brothers and sisters. In one, once and only, the drinking and eating, it takes for a week. Wow. Amen? So, they ate, they ate and drank. They are really, I think they are really drunk. Yeah. Or they are really full. Amen? I'm going to speak in Tagalog. Palagay ko naman. Ang tingin nila sa walo, ocho. Amen? But it was job responsibility to bless, to purify, and offer sacrifice to the Lord. This sacrifice is composed of a ram for its burnt offering. Amen? Because Job is afraid to, is afraid to God. Amen? One for... One for each son and daughter. Amen. Job had placed his faith and trust in the sacrifices. However, brothers and sisters, listen to this. However, these sacrifices, although a great blessings to him, to Job, could not atone or make, or make reparation for the sins of his son and daughters. This means their sins have not been forgiven. There is no evidence in the Bible they were forgiven. Amen? Amen. In verse 9, Does God fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. In verse 9, Satan insinuates or suggests that Job's motive is purely selfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. He intimates that Job is serving God not out of love, but for what he gets out of it. Amen? Amen. Meaning, the rule of Satan is this. I'm going to serve you if you give me something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or you could do you could do it uh, the other way. I'm I'm going to give you if you serve me. Amen. That's the condition of Satan. God brags to Satan about Job's Job's virtue, his moral excellence of a person. But but Satan asserted that Job is only righteous is because. God has favored his generosity. Amen? Satan challenged God that if, if given the approval, amen? If given the approval to inflict suffering, 
job will change and curse God. Amen. In verse 10, it says here, Have you not put the heads around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. Heads symbolizes protection. Amen. Amen. This verse proves how absolutely secure from satanic malicious behavior mm -hmm. are the children of God. Amen. 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 How secure, how absolutely secure from satanic malicious behavior are the children of God. Amen. 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 Because God provided heads or protection on everyone who believes in Him and who trusts in Him. Amen. In verse 11, it says here, But he stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Mm -hmm. That's what Satan told, 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 told to our God. The Lord purposely allows certain things. Amen. The Lord purposely allows certain things. He gave Satan permission to do certain things. But Satan had to have permission first Amen. from the Lord. He needs a permit, brothers and sisters. He also could not tempt Job without God's permission. No. He cannot influence nature without God's permission. You can read that in Job uh, chapter 1, verse 12, 16 and 19. He cannot physically harm without God's permission. In Job 2, 2, 2 and 6. He cannot take human life without first getting God's permission. In Job, 2, uh, Job chapter 2, 6. The Bible says in Hebrew 2, 14. Hebrews 2, 14 says here, Satan has the power of death. However, this not the this does, does not mean that he has the ultimate authority Amen. to cause people to die. Amen? Amen? No! Only God has the authority. Yes. Amen? Satan cannot even touch a believer. No! Amen. Without the permission of God. Amen? He complained to the Lord about this in Job chapter 1 verse 10. God has played has placed a fence around its believers. Around its believers, the heads, protecting them, protecting them from evil. Amen? First John 5, 18. He cannot even mention the name of John. Mm -hmm. Until God allows him to do so. Job 3, Job 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 3. He cannot force believers to do anything. Amen. He has no power unless it be granted by God. Amen. Amen. Those who have trusted in Jesus Christ have been freed from the authority of the, of the devil. Acts 26 verse 18. Amen. He cannot even read our thoughts. <laughs> no. In Isaiah 40, 28, 1 King 8, 39, Psalms 94 verse 11, Matthew 9 verse 4. I want you to read this in your houses. Amen. He does not know the future. No. Only God knows what is going, what is going to occur in the future. Isaiah 46 verse 19. He also, he's also a coward. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Satan is also a coward in spite of all this, of all his aggressiveness. Amen. He's very aggressive. Like a, like a roaring lion, lion eh? it was described in 1 Peter. In spite of all his aggressiveness and rage, but he cannot do anything. James 4, 7. And we are victorious. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. In verse 12, it says here, The Lord said to Satan, Very well, very well then, everything he has is in your hands. But on the man himself, 
do not lay a finger. Amen? Amen. God permits Satan to abuse Job to experiment with his brazen claim. Mm -hmm. But God forbids, forbids Satan to take Job's life Amen. in the manner he has given power to afflict Job. But God keep him on the leash. Mm -hmm. You know a leash? Just like a dog. Amen. It has a leash here. Satan has a leash. And the leash, God is holding the leash. Amen? Amen. Just like a dog. <laughs> it has a cord around its mm -hmm. leg for restraining Amen. to avoid going too far. Amen? That's what God did to Satan. He, could, he couldn't do it, whatever he wants. No. There were limitations. There were limitations placed on what Satan could do. Amen. As there are with all believers, Satan cannot bring financial and physical destruction upon us. Amen. Unless it is by God's permission. God has the power over what Satan 